Hey everyone, so today we're looking at a watch. Some kind of smart watch. I think it's a fitness watch more than anything. It's a Garmin with green lights. Um, what is the model of this one? Uh, I got a serial number. So it's a Garmin. Um, looks better at that angle on the camera. Um, there's a light on off so the fault with this one or the, the complaint with this one is that it doesn't hold a charge very long it won't fully charge or it doesn't last long once it is charged we'll plug it into our charger and see what's going on very dim, maybe it's so dim because the battery is at 7% but uh, only uh, 80 milliamps charge current which really is not a lot it could be maybe trickle charging until it has enough in it to um, fast charge safely so I'll leave that on for a minute and we'll see uh, what happens okay it's been on for about uh, four or five minutes and what's interesting is it says 15% it's gone from 7% 7 to 15% in a very small space of time now it's 17% but it's only drawing 90 milliamps now there's no way no way surely that a good battery would uh, develop charge that quickly on such little current see if it pops up again a bit more and watch the time count up and see how long it takes just jumped to 19 percent so yeah I would hazard a guess that it is a bad battery so they look like uh, miniature Torx bits I think a T5 seems to do the job to the naked eye it looks like it could even be a um, hex how easy is this gonna just pop off is it uh, yep get a fingernail under the edge there I wonder what is inside uh, there's gonna be a lot Okay, we can see down the right side there is a flex that we need to be careful of. And it possibly flicks open from the other way. So I'll just uh, spin that around. And then we may get better access if the flex allows it to. There we go. You can see the flex on the left side now. That is the direction it wants to bend in. Now if we follow that flex it comes down here and there's a sponge on top of it now I would almost almost uh, yeah pretty confidently thinking that there's a connector under there that we can pop off that goes to the front panel not sure what this little red thing is but it is loose so let's try not to lose that <laughs> and note its position uh, there but we have the battery on the back and I'd say maybe the charging circuit is all part of the back I'm not sure um, but uh, let's let's uh, see if we can get a small screwdriver under under that flex and maybe disconnect it Oh, it pretty much just pulled itself off. <laughs> yeah. There's a fairly commonly used uh, connector there. Similar to what you'd find in a cell phone, for example. What's interesting is that's the connector on the back for the USB cable. And it probably does data transfer as well. You can see it comes through to a couple little 
There are pins on this side which make contact with the PCB there up the very top and uh, it's pretty tiny but they look like they're probably springy connections um, so it goes through to that board which then manages the charging from there um, could it be as simple as a bad connection I don't know the battery itself is a one of those <laughs> and possibly unique to this machine um, okay yeah it just plugs in a little white connector on the right there so it plugs in there um, it could be a bit tricky to monitor voltage on that while we have it plugged in to charge because it needs to connect through to the main board so that's unfortunate but we could try and charge the battery ourselves directly and just see how it behaves that way if I uh, gently probe the little bit of connector we can see through the plastic of the plug and it is three point, uh, almost 3.7 volts so 3.7 volts is quite low uh, also good to note that it does not appear to be swollen feels like a bit higher on the side though but I don't know if that's part of the construction and that could be normal but overall it's fairly flat so what I'm going to do is uh, connect the other end of these leads to my uh, bench supply and uh, I'll just touch them on the battery connector um, which I'm confident won't go anywhere else it'll just come straight up to here so it's not going to be an issue but we'll just put it on there and just see how much current it draws off the bench supply if we try and charge this battery directly alright so we're going to current limit that to about 100 and 140 milliamps and we'll see what sort of uh, voltage it comes down to to maintain that. It'll give us an idea. And we have, ah, uh, look at that. So it stays at four volts. Now this should actually drop down closer to what the open terminal voltage is. shouldn't shoot straight up to 4 volts without pulling some current through it. So I've just received the new battery and uh, we'll have a probe of that and see what it behaves like and get, get an idea as to whether we're on track or not. Hopefully it is new and not uh, recycled. So looking at the voltage as it sits We've got uh, 3.6, so she's quite low. Now if I take my bench supply and see how it behaves under some charging current. It's only 150 milliamp hour battery, so I'm going to current limit set it to 80 milliamp hours. And uh, we will see what it does. So there we go, is pulling 80 milliamps. It's nice and steady. And uh, I guess that's key. Uh, I've got the meter attached as well, so it's measuring 4 volts at the battery in order to do this. And as a comparison, I will now probe the old one again, which has a current open terminal voltage of. 3.6 so about the same and if I apply charge it appears to be doing the same well it doesn't mean it's actually got any capacity maybe I jump the gun on it because it's such a small battery um, it was unable to the higher charge current was too much for it 
well, we've got it. We may as well go ahead and replace it um, and see what happens. It might behave differently in the watch. But it was a runtime issue, so I think there's not many other options really. Now, what we'll do is unhook it initially with a tweezer. Get a tweezer under the uh, connector and uh, gently pry upwards and it will just pop out. Um, of course you don't want to try and dig too deep or you will damage the bottom of the connector of course. So you want to get under the white plug, you don't want to get under here and pull that up. Uh, these are glued on so what you want to do is get uh, Get your cotton swab with a little bit of alcohol or some other metering device and just uh, give it a squeeze and let the alcohol run down underneath it to soften the glue, make it easier to get off because you don't really want to physically damage this uh, cell. Once that's soaked in for a little bit, we'll uh, get a pry tool and very gently lifting lifting it might take a little bit of an effort and then eventually the tape will let go and up it comes dry off any residue we will grab the new one and it does come with tape as well I'm thinking I will not stick it down initially in case there's a problem with it We'll just plug it in and we'll hook it up to the watch and we'll we'll test fly it and see what happens. Reconnect that. Just gonna take a little line it up and just push down on it and it'll snap down into place. Uh, if you are using a metal screwdriver, don't push hard enough that you you know join these two connections together, the gold connections there, uh, that wouldn't be good. But just gently on the plastic housing, you could even push down with your finger, but I was just showing you how it seats in. So now we'll uh, hook it up to the watch and just uh, we'll give it a full charge cycle. So I'll plug it in, we'll let it fully charge and then we'll run it and just see how long it runs for I guess. Um, Because there's battery voltage on this connector you want to be careful about um, how hard you push it down if it's not lined up you don't want it to be joining connections together that shouldn't I might just take it out from under the microscope because I have a lot of the lead length and I can't really get a, a good feel for it um, I want to be able to sort of see under the flex and just make sure it's lining up properly I guess it's possible once you've plugged it in you could then plug the battery in. Probably not a silly idea actually. Last thing we want to do is to jam a jam power across something we shouldn't. Okay, you're not really going to be able to see this but Unfortunately, it's the only way to do it. So I heard that snap in. Um, so now we can actually lift up on it. There we go. It does give us access while it's plugged in down on the board. So we'll plug the battery in now. And it would be a, a safer way of doing it, I think. There we go and we're going to have to put the back down because the um, charge connector comes through these pins on the back so we're going to have to screw it down into place for testing grab our cable and see what happens now this is a uh, any direction cable clip it on we are seeing 80 milliamp draw so I guess that's how the watch charges it. it 
80, 90 milliamps. Half C, being 150 milliamps, that's roughly half C. That would be understandable, especially for its physical size. Now we have on the front of the watch, it's very dim. I don't know, how do we turn it on? Oh, no. Home. 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 There we go. <clears throat> so it does say 19% there. Yeah, up the top, 20%. That's quite fast charging, isn't it? That's a similar effect to what we were getting with uh, the original battery. Wouldn't that be funny? We just bought a battery that we didn't need. That's a learning curve. I mean, you can't know how these things function. But that might mean that we have another problem with the watch itself. Let's let it fully charge, and then we'll see how long it takes to discharge. Okay, so what have we got? Uh, started at 6.50, it's now 8.40. So a couple of hours to fully charge. How about that? Oh. Actually, it does have battery down the bottom right. Uh, bottom right. Bottom right, and not at the top. But somehow we can get that top one to come back. Oh, only when it's charging. Okay, cool. So, 99%, it was 100%, I just unplugged it and lights came on, it did things. Um, I, that, the current draw went to zero, so it was definitely not charging. So now we just need to see how long it's going to take to discharge. But at two hours, it should have a decent amount of uh, a power left in it. So at 80 milliamps um, at two hours, say, so what's that, 160 milliamp hours? So we pretty much crammed the full charge into this little cell. So I would expect this to last, I don't know what the normal runtime on a smartwatch like this is, a couple of days. We'll find out. Well, all right then, it's been a whole day. Um, not exactly 24 hours, but almost. It was about 82% when I went to um, uh, bed. Now it's 76 uh, it's just been sitting there with, uh, you know, light off standard display. Um, it says in the specs, this is a uh, Phoenix 5S model, so the specs say uh, up to nine days in smartwatch mode. So, I mean, if it's just being a watch, um, that's, um, so what are we, 76% from 82, so it's about 6%. So it's 6% per day. Um, what's that, 54% after 9 days, so obviously being a smart watch it's gonna, you know, you're gonna be looking at it a bit more during the day and that, so it's probably about right. Um, so I'm gonna call this fixed, uh, we'll give it back to the owner and we'll see, I guess we'll get a feel for how they use it and whether it is lasting longer, but um, I don't know, I have a feeling that it was turning off a lot quicker than than that with minimal use so i hope you like that hopefully it helps out anyone else and thanks for watching